Well, this is part three in this. I was hoping I'd get it done in part two because I only have a few minutes left. Probably got six or eight minutes worth of video left to do this, but it's important and I, I, I wouldn't leave out anything I said at this point. Here's another paper showing this genetic information of back migration into Africa. It's the point that we were at. The migrating population was more similar to present-day French and Chinese populations than to Papua and New Guinea. So the population migrating into Africa was similar to your present-day read modern French Caucasoids. Hmm. Well, that's because they were doing uh, fr French genetics, and they were, yeah, they're more like this than that. African individuals carry a stronger signal of Neanderthal and, and ancestry than previously thought due to mi back migrations back into Africa, predominantly from an ancestral Europeans. This is in another paper here, identifying and interpreting apparent Neanderthal ancestry in African individuals. It's been re-found out that they did actually have some Neanderthal ancestry because they were picking a people as a zero point, the way that I understand it, that actually had a small amount, and so it was negating that point. And then as soon as they turned that off and realized that effect, then it showed up. But it's a small percentage. It's less, less than 1%. But then all of the admix that they've had since then is all from cognizoids and people or it's from anybody else on the planet that they've had admix from has Neanderthal admix. Basically. This is consistent with the observation that the African Neanderthal sequence is predominantly a subset of non-African segments. Basically Caucasoid segments. Neanderthal sequence shared exclusively between Africans and Europeans compared with the sequence shared between Europeans and East Asians is different. Africans carry a signal of European and Neanderthal DNA. Diversity quite commonly is a result of mixing and hybridization as we were talking about and Africa is a home of mixed populations. Yes, the Khoisan are not really related. The Khoi and San didn't used to be quite related. And then there were admixes and so on, but then the Khoisan are pretty much melded out as one. The Bantoids were melted out as one, the Nilo Saharans, the East Africans, the Dinka, and so on. And plus the little pygmies in Africa. Get her done. When non Africans arrived in Africa, they contributed to that diversity that we were talking about. And so here we have him talking again, and I don't have it loaded up for full amount here. But. This is Chris Stringer, famous geneticist now, what he was saying about this. And this is Homo erectus forms that are found throughout the ancient world. And so I think you can still recognize that there's a lot of that form. They're still in some of these people to this day with an admix and in aggression. And in the next few years hopefully we'll be able to get admix or get genetic testing from these type of people and see just what admix came from who where what makes up the reality of everything that goes on because this didn't do anything but open up another little puzzle didn't it but Genetics is a puzzle. I'm glad that Egyptologist 7 is here able to help us figure out the puzzle. She seems to be pretty damn good at these genetics puzzles, huh guys? Like, share, and subscribe and enjoy. And if you haven't yet, go check out her channel, Egyptologist 7. 
You can watch the original video on this or see her recent genetics videos on all kinds of people. Peace.